Spread the fire. Welcome back to SMWX. And 2024 has kicked off with a bang. Can you believe it? We are in election season and we are going to be taking you through this election. This is the place you want to be in 2024 to understand what's happening. Today, I'm going to do an election roundup of some of the key news relating to different political parties. We're going to be looking at Jacob Zuma and his MK party, the ANC, its January 8th statements, opposition parties, the EFF, Rise Mzansi, the DA. Let's have a look at what's been happening on the campaign trail and where we are in terms of South Africa's election. Spread the fire. Spread the fire. Spread the fire. So to start off with, I want to look at the ANC's January 8th statement in Bumalanga. Of course, since 1972, the ANC has been engaged in the January 8th statement. It was started by their president, Oliver Tambo. Uh, there weren't January 8th statements between 1972 and 1979, but I think there's been one every year since then. It's been certainly very regular in the last 15, 20 years. So this is when the ANC steps up ahead of a new year, diagnoses where it has been, and also sets its goals and its trajectory for the year ahead. Now, of course, this January 8th statement delivered by President Cyril Ramaphosa is particularly important because it comes in an election year. Now, often the ANC used to actually launch its manifesto at the January 8th statement. The ANC hasn't done that fully yet, although we did get a picture of what the ANC's campaign message is going to be. And it looks to me like they're doing something similar to what they did in past elections. Now, it's clear the big problem for the ANC in 2024 is that we haven't had a very good five years as a country. The economy hasn't really grown. Unemployment has not got any better. Load shedding is in a terrible crisis. Service delivery hasn't improved. Governance and uh, financial administration is not, is not on the up. And so corruption has not been dealt a decisive blow. So to be quite frank, it's hard for the ANC to campaign on its record because it doesn't have a great record over the last five years. But what the ANC can do is try to change the time frame of this election to say, OK, it's not about the last five years. It's about the last 30 years of power. OK, things might not be that great right now, but things are much better than they were before we as a party took power as a whole. So it seems to me what the ANC is trying to do is reframe the time frame of this election. They're going to talk about 30 years of democracy, South Africa celebrating this milestone and the way that life is better now than it was in 1994. Now, I suppose in some ways that's the only thing the ANC can do because, like I say, it's hard to campaign on the last five years. But the problem is that they have tried this before. It worked really well in 2014. In fact, I remember with that election they had this campaign slogan, we have a good story to tell. And that was all about how, don't look at the last five years, look at the whole story of South Africa up to 2014. It's 10 years later now, though, so it's kind of hard to sell to people, look at 1994, when some people weren't even born in 1994, or they don't remember living through that era. So I think that's key to, to look at the way that President Ramaphosa tried to frame things around the 30-year milestone. I want to take a look back at the previous January 8th statement, because it's easy to forget what was said there. And there were a number of priorities, one of which was load shedding. So at the beginning of last year, the ANC said, we are going to decisively focus on the problem of load shedding. And what happened? We had the worst load shedding in the history of load shedding. So what the ANC says and promises is one thing. What it does is another. They also promised last year in the January 8th statement to deal with the question of ANC renewal, to improve unity in the movement. What do we see now? A very divided ANC, former presidents leaving the party, uh, very serious rifts within the party. So it's not key to me. I mean, unity, if unity means kicking everyone out and, and remaining with just one faction in power, maybe that's one way of getting unity. But bringing all the different parts of the ANC that made up the ANC over the last 10 years together under unity does not seem to be working. 
So it's clear to me that the ANC has clearly kicked off setting its intention for the next election cycle. We can see the direction it's going to travel in terms of its campaign message. I think another thing worth mentioning is that, of course, the ANC decided to go to Mpumalanga. And this isn't just where this is happening is really interesting because Mpumalanga is one of the last strongholds of the ANC. So they clearly very focused on doing well there because they think if they can do really well in Bumalanga, that will obviously also increase the national picture and the national number. The ANC has always polled really high in that province. And so they're strategically choosing to double down on where they are already strong rather than to send a message in a province like Gauteng or even KZN where they are comparatively weaker. And so... I think we are going to see an election strategy of the ANC really trying to keep hold of those strongholds, the Eastern Cape, Mpumalanga, Limpopo, and and really trying to swell the numbers there to account for the losses that it seems destined to suffer in places like Gauteng, KZN, possibly even Free State. Uh, We know the Western Cape picture already. Having said that, I think it's worth also talking about the build-up to this January 8th statement because we did see uh, Figi Lembalula, the Secretary General, coming out with a very controversial statement about Nganza, and I want to link that to the MK party, which I'm going to talk about next. But in, in an interview that I did with him actually on the SABC, check that out. What was interesting is, is that he took aim at Chairperson Gwede Mandashe, uh, who criticized Mbalula for saying that basically... The ANC lied to defend former president over in Gansla. And Gwede Mandashe was like, Mbalula got confused. He saw too many cameras and uh, he basically shouldn't have said that. And Mbalula basically went for Mandashe in that interview that I did with him saying, we shouldn't do these things in the media and I'm not going to criticize him in the media, which was basically criticizing him in the media. Um, so I think in terms of unity, also watch the extent to which the the center of the ANC holds going into this election and whether uh, Mbalula, whose political style is to attract headlines, it's to make controversial statements and to to be at the forefront of the media discourse. And there are some in the ANC who think, well, actually, that's, that's a risky strategy at the moment. We can't afford controversy. We need to play a more conservative, considered game. I think within the party's leadership, there's a debate right now about do we go the flamboyant Mbalula route? Uh, it might be a bit messy, but it keeps us at the front and center of people's minds. Or do we do we keep more quiet, stay more silent, and and play the, the safe game? And I think that that's the conversation going on in the party right now. So that's the ANC for us. Of course, when new polls and new numbers come out, we're going to look at where things stand. But let's come on to MK and former President Jacob Zuma, because, of course, talk about headlines. Ever since he's announced this uh, support for the new party, uh, we obviously had a very big episode where we um, analyzed the the new MK party and go and check out that episode if you want to see it. But I want to talk about what's happened since then. I think there are a couple of things we need to we need to bear in mind with this party. Um, one thing is 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 an event that former President Zuma actually did in Mpumalanga, and I, and I thought that was interesting to the extent that I think that that party is signaling that this is not just going to be a KZN party, and I think we're going to see former President Zuma going to more different places around the country to move away from the narrative that this is just about. KZN. Um, So I would watch out for that. And I think even if he can shave off a couple of percentage points in many different provinces, that all adds up. And of course, KZN will be a stronghold and and will be their best performing province, probably. But I'm looking at that as I look at the MK party. I'm also looking at at the recent kind of amalgamations of different formations that seem to be happening around uh, the MK party. So we, we had uh, Ace Mahashule's new uh, political outfit ha- has said that they're going to be partnering with former President Jacob Zuma. And that's interesting news. Um, I think what we're seeing is a potential alliance of political parties building to the left of the ANC, at least branding themselves to the left of the ANC. 
So we're going to have the MK party. We're probably going to have the ATM. I see the PAC has also said they want to talk uh, to former President Zuma. So I think we're going to have this constellation of parties that will, and Zuma foreshadowed this in his opening speech in MK saying, you know, let's bring an alliance of parties together. But where does the EFF fit? Is the EFF going to signal that it stands with one group or another before the election? Or are they going to keep their powder dry, so to speak? Because one thing we have to remember with these alliances is what kind of numbers do they actually really bring these other parties? I mean, we, Ace Mahashule's electoral outfit hasn't been tested. So it's all well and good saying, you know, you're bringing two parties together, but how many percentage points is that? Because two plus zero is still zero. So it doesn't mean it's a big, a big shift. The PAC has struggled electorally. So, you know, is it going to be one seat? Maybe. But again, how big could that alliance be? I think is still the question that that stands out. How big will the Zuma party be? Check that video about the MK party uh, to, to see some of my, my estimates there. But if the EFF were to join something like that, well, then you're talking about something that could be around 15% with the EFF, 2-3% Zuma maybe. Um, now you're talking 17, 18. You could be talking a block of 20% of the vote, um, depending on who joins, and that would be significant. Um, so... I think the jury is out, but we need to to watch because it seems that there's a, a, an opposing pact. You've got the moonshot pact, which is now the multi-party charter, and now you've got the other side of the of the moonshot pact. Let's see what they call themselves. Um, but it looks like there's going to be an alliance of parties on the left of the ANC, an alliance of parties, you could say, on the right. There will be some parties that, that don't declare their allegiance, and you'll have the ANC in the center. And that's looks like that's what the ideological spectrum is is shaping up for the 2024 election. Let's talk about the EFF because the EFF is going to be launching their manifesto in February. I think right now nothing major to report on what the electoral strategy is, nothing no major headlines being grabbed, but I think they're working on their internal machinery at the moment, uh making sure that the behind the scenes planning is happening. And that seems to be where the EFF is uh, for now. But we will see as things build up to that manifesto launch, we know that the EFF is good at seizing the media spotlight as it builds up to uh, going to KZN. And unlike the NC, which is in Bumalanga, the EFF is taking a big risk by going to KwaZulu-Natal. This is a province that hasn't been big for them in the past, in past elections. It's, it's somewhere they're looking to grow in. And they're going in and they're saying they're going to launch their manifesto in a stadium in in um, KwaZulu-Natal, Moses Mabida. That's a, that's a big statement. And if they're able to fill that statement, it will be a big statement. If they're not, then it, it might be a dent on their credibility, at least in terms of their mobilization power in KZN. But keep an eye on that because added to the MK party and what that's going to do in KZN, if the EFF now has a big showing in KZN in February, then you really start to see the narrative shift in that province. And we've already on this channel spoken about the importance of that province as it relates to the national picture in South Africa. So I think that's it for, for those three parties. I want to look at um, the DA because the DA has also been relatively quiet in the early part of this year. But of course, it's going to be under a bit of pressure with the ICJ um, court appearance, which we've recently seen, because I think that's a popular thing. In the country, I think the country is united largely behind the fact that we went to the ICJ. People uh, tend to feel that uh, South Africa is on the right side of that of that question, and of course, the DA has come out quite strongly saying that, you know, it's the wrong thing to do. Now, there is a sizable group a minority within South Africa, sure, that also feels that, so that will resonate with that group. But I think the DA, the DA's challenge is that. I think most people appreciate that the DA governs relatively well, um, or maybe even better than the ANC where it governs. It, it's good at potholes and that kind of thing. But it's their foreign policy which can sometimes irk South African voters. And so people are going to be weighing up in their minds, like, do I take this foreign policy that I don't like with a better potential for domestic delivery, certainly not perfect, or do I take 
potential bad delivery with this foreign policy that I like, and such is the juxtaposition of the South African voter. But don't underestimate the DA's electoral machinery. The DA is a very organized party when it comes to elections. It's a seasoned party. It's run many elections. It has its systems in place. And when they click into gear, they'll be clicking into gear for sure. And so when parties are quiet, like the DA right now, I think similar to the EFF, they are, they're planning the year ahead. They're planning their machinery. And as February starts to come around, that's when the political calendar really starts to get hot. That's when the state of the nation happens. That's when manifesto launches start happening. And that's where parties are going to be really kicking into campaign season in earnest. So I think that's where the DA is right now, preparing their machinery, getting ready. They're taking the odd jab here and there opportunistically when they can at the ANC, but they're getting ready to get that machinery going. Rise and is another party I want to mention because, hey, poster game is on lock. Rise and has some serious, serious... Uh, poster game muscle uh, all across the country. I was in the Eastern Cape. I was in the rural Eastern Cape. Is I even saw some Rise and Zanzi posters as I was driving out there. Um, they've got another poster campaign that that's you know out on all street polls, and they are launching their manifesto as well, which is going to be interesting because it's going to be interesting to see how one of the new entrants announces themselves this year. And let's see what they do. I think it's the twentieth of January, so I'm I'm keeping an eye on them. And I suppose that's all for now. That would be how I round up the political season as it's unfolded in the first few weeks of January. What are your thoughts in terms of the election, how it's unfolding? Who do you think is going to do well? Who do you think is not going to do well? Who do you think has done well this January and who is out of the gates uh, with a, a strong showing this election season? What are your thoughts on the ANC's January 8th? What are your thoughts on, on the Zuma MK party? What are your thoughts on the DA, the EFF, Rise Mzansi and other new entrants? Let's keep the conversation going on this channel. We'll be doing regular election updates where we keep you up to date. You can just come to this channel. We'll be speaking to people via interviews. I'll be doing analysis, various other people, Tessa Dooms, Mighty Jamie, they'll be doing their analysis. And as long as you keep it locked on SMWX, you are going to be one of the most informed people in this South African election. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you for the next installment. Aye.